All right, guys, today's lesson is all about teaching you how to marry your hands and arms to your body. Remember, it's neither a hand and arm swing or a body swing. It's both. You need to learn to articulate your wrists, of course. That's the angular speed in the golf swing, creating and releasing angles effectively using your wrists. You've also got to learn to use your arms, create some linear force in your golf swing. But you can't just stand there and use your hands and arms, guys. You've also got to learn when and how to use your body. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to tie together these sort of complex ideas and break them down into easy to implement salient points. That's really the challenge with golf instruction is to not over instruct. The last thing we want is you overthinking. So I've got some very simple drills I'm going to teach you today that are gonna help you create more efficient timing in your golf swing. Remember, timing is the adhesive that glues the swing together. Once you understand how to blend the articulation of the wrists, the swinging motion of the arms, and a proficient movement with your body, you'll hit it further and straighter than you ever have with less effort. And perhaps even more importantly, you won't place unnecessary stress on your joints, the joints of your lower back and your hips. So let's get started. All right, now most golfers overuse their body too early in the downswing. If you're an elite golfer, your lower body segment, your legs and your hips are gonna wanna get out in front of your arms, arms get trapped behind you. If you're a weekend warrior, a higher handicap, struggling to create speed, maybe hitting a slice, it's the upper body that gets out in front of the arms in the form of a spin as you change direction, what I call a transition spin. They're different, but they're the same. The bottom line is most people are getting their body ahead of their arms early in the transition, putting them out of sequence. As a result, the body has to stall and the hands and arms take over. You may feel like you're using your arms too much, the truth of it is you have to use your hands and arms too much because your body moved too soon in the downswing. So the first drill, which I absolutely love, is called a feet together drill. And the reason this is, I think, one of the best drills in golf is that there's no drill in golf better at destabilizing the pelvis. If you're overusing your upper body or overusing your lower body, this drill is going to fix that because it significantly reduces normal ground reaction forces. In other words, the larger, stronger body segments are pacified to allow the golfer to engage their hands and arms without interruption from the body. And that's where most people get into trouble. So you're going to create more speed, guys, with less effort if you use this drill. And it's so easy. All you do is put the feet together, put the ball right opposite the center of your stance, use a tee initially, go ahead and take your regular grip, and just swing your hands and arms freely. You're gonna feel like your hands and arms move past your swing center. What we don't want is the body outrunning the hands and the arms. Now, if your upper body gets too dominant, you're gonna get thrown forward. If your lower body gets dominant, you may fall back, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and hit one with the feet together. Put the ball right opposite the center of my stance. Good balance, guys. Remember, it's gonna really challenge you to stay in balance, swinging the arms freely from right to left. All right, we'll take that every time. So what I felt there and what I want you to feel initially, and again, remember, this is a drill, guys, okay? Feels and reels are very, very different. But what you should feel here is you should feel like your arms are winning the race. And what I mean by that is feel like your hand, for example, your trail hand is moving past your right hip and shoulder at impact. So essentially what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to isolate the angular momentum of the wrists and the linear momentum of the arms and separate that from the body. That's really the first step is to get you feeling your hands and arms. And then obviously we can start to move the body dynamically and engage the two, bring them together, go ahead and get them married. Okay, so let's do one more. Same thing, feet together, really, swinging freely here. I feel like my wrist, elbows, and shoulders are more relaxed than they've ever been before. All right, pretty much the same golf shot there. Very, very happy with that. So let me explain a little bit what happens when we do this drill. I think this is why it's so important. The top of your backswing, 
ideally what you're looking for is we're looking for some good arm structure. And what I mean by that is when we get to the top of the backswing, what you see with good golfers is you see the rib cage to tricep, bicep to forearm, forearm to shaft, create some nice 90 degree angles back here. The reason that's so important is because it allows the arm some room to swing down in front of the body. We start to get the arms kind of too far behind us back here, makes it a lot more difficult. So the key here is if we've got those 90 degree angles at the top of the backswing, we're gonna gradually give up those angles as we approach impact. So if it's 90 here, we give up about 45 degrees of angle when the, when the hand's in front of the right hip. We give up the other 45 degrees post impact. So we're creating a lot of speed here with the arms, a little bit like snapping a towel or throwing a ball, hitting a, uh, a slap shot in hockey, a cross court forehand, even throwing a punch. It's the same idea. The arms create a lot of speed in the golf swing. Unfortunately, most people tie their arms to their body too early in the downswing and they try and spin their body to more speed, okay? And that gets the club trapped behind. From there, here's the irony behind the whole thing. The club has to release early. So a lot of people are trying to create lag in their swing and they're doing it the wrong way. The more we can get the arm swinging faster down in front of us, the easier it is going to be to be able to create that lag. The feet together drill allows all this to happen because it forces the body to stabilize in the transition. You can't jump out of it too early and that's a big problem for most golfers. So that's going to be the first drill. So hit yourself a half dozen drills with your feet together. Feel like your arms are kind of winning the race here. A lot of relaxation in the wrists, the shoulders, the elbows, and then we're going to move to the next drill. All right, guys, drill number two is the trail foot back drill. This is one of my favorite drills. It's been around for a very, very long time. This is a progression, guys, all right, that's designed to move you into the full swing gradually. Feet together first, then we do the trail foot back drill, and then, of course, we go ahead and hit full swing. So if you practice effectively, it's the only way that these changes are going to actually adhere. So bear that in mind. Don't skip any steps, okay? Just be patient. If you do, I know you're going to get better. I've been doing this a very, very long time. So remember, you're not fully destabilizing your pelvis like with your feet together. You're giving yourself a little wider stance. You're going to go ahead and get your right foot back. You're going to go ahead and front load. And what I mean by that is you're going to get most of the weight off your back foot by lifting your trail heel and getting your weight forward. And that's going to engage this lead hip which is incredibly important if you want to strike the ball well. What we don't want, guys, if you want to fire your right side, is an unstable left side. I see so many golfers sliding their hips forward. Their left knee looks like a spaghetti noodle. We've got other golfers that stay on their back foot. This transition spin often causes too much weight to be back. So remember, if you want to fire that right side, you need a stable left side. And the other thing that it does so well, by dragging the trail foot back, provides an enormous corridor back here to hit the ball from the inside. I know so many of you are struggling with coming over the top. So let's go ahead and hit one with the trail foot back drill. Drop my right foot behind me, get my weight up on my left side, swing my arms freely, same thing guys. Feel really, really stable there. For those of you again that tend to slide or spin your hips out, there's no better drill for engaging that left hip. We really wanna feel like we're pushing down and into it. Chest isn't of course gonna collapse, chest stays up. But ultimately what you wanna do here is you wanna get that left leg stable. What we don't wanna be doing here is moving that lead hip around as you make contact. Now once you've done that a few times, we're ready to hit some full shots, okay? You wanna swing at about 75%. I use a seven iron. If you want to hit off a tee, you can go ahead and do that. So how do we integrate these feelings? You know, the feeling of swinging the hands and arms freely past the body. Uh, at the same time, the feeling of being engaged into the lead hip. So we're not spinning the hips out when we do start to use our body. It causes all sorts of trouble, as you well know. What we've got to do here is we've got to swing at a speed that we can feel. First and foremost, so when you swing, don't swing faster than about 75% of your full speed. You're gonna start to adhere the right hip, the trail hip with the trail arm as we swing through the golf ball. What you've been doing up to this point is you've been swinging your arms kind of past your body. You can see my right arm on my shirt, it's swinging past my right hip. The opposite of that would be my right hip moving out way in front of my trail arm. You see I've got very little leverage here 
and this is no good really at the end of the day we can't play golf just with the hands and arms as i discussed when we started the video start off with a little bit more weight into your lead leg to start with i don't want you guys stuck behind the golf ball back here and what we're going to do is we're going to start to swing the hands and arms without moving the body just like we did when we started down in here that right arm is going to catch up to the right hip and when that right arm catches up you start to move your right knee and hip towards your left leg watch so much stuff on youtube left hip back you know taking the left side and pulling it out of the way what i want my students doing is i want them stabilizing their lead hip i want them moving into the lead hip so it's almost a feeling of moving your right side towards your left as opposed to taking the left side and pulling it out of the way so all we're doing is we're connecting the trail arm to the trail hip i have to keep my back to the target remember guys i don't want to transition spin that's the whole point of this Get my feet a little further apart, keep my back to the target. I'm getting my arms down in front of my body, just like I was when I had my feet together, just like I was when I had my trail foot back drill. Did exactly the same thing. Don't get into a regular stance and start firing your body too soon. That's the key. You've got to take the feels you had with the first two drills and start to implement those feels in your regular swing. And that requires a degree of patience with the body, especially in the early stages of the downswing. And we're going to move the right side forward arms swing through exactly the same way and you can see when i'm halfway through i'm halfway off my back foot guys okay that's what i want we don't want to be halfway through with our arms and be flat footed conversely for you long hitters out there you don't want to be up on your toe when you're in this position here in my opinion unless you're hitting a driver i totally get it ground force reactions are really important but when you're hitting an eight iron or a seven iron into a green the last thing you want to be doing is jumping out early with your lower body so remember halfway through here we're going to match it up halfway off your back foot three quarters will be club to the sky three quarters off your back foot clubs above your head you're going to finish up on your toe so the right side starts to move forward up against a braced left side and that's how we get the right side of our body firing and that's what we're going to work on next okay regular swing now go ahead and make a swing i'm going to get my arms down in front of me before i start to drive that right side through i don't want to do it too early and that's where most of you are getting into trouble so when i finish my golf swing you can see here i'm up on my toe I've got all my weight on my front foot. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and take a step forward towards my target. Most of you are finishing with a lot of weight, guys, on your back foot. We want to make sure that we get off that back foot, but we've got to get off the back foot at the right time, not too early, all right? So that's how we do it. That's how we marry the arms to the body. Start with the arm swing first. When you start to get the arm swinging freely, start to integrate your body and then you marry the two together and you're off to the races. So I hope that helped. Go through the three drills, okay? Feet together first, trail foot butt second. Go ahead and get a little wider. Understand the importance of being patient with your body, guys. Get your arms in front of you and then push off your back foot, guys. Move your right side towards your left. Remember, we don't wanna get stuck on the back foot. Go ahead and get those arms down. Swing the arms through, but get your right side firing last thing you want to do is get stuck back here okay i hope that helps get after it